drive fast is when you don't eat or drink. How long you drive fast? It depends. Can you do? You can't do a week of drive fast. You do a, what? Some days. I done did the longest I done ever did drive fasting was like close to a month, about three weeks. Kev, no food, no. no water. Come on. Big boys Big neighborhood. Boy. Beautiful day in the neighborhood, man. Yeah. No need to beat around the bush. I've been waiting for this man to come back into the neighborhood. Kevin Gates, welcome back to the Ow. neighborhood, bro. Thank you for having me back. Man, in the come on now, brother. Welcome Our door, back. my door's not open. My door's off the hinge for you, man. Yes, so anytime you need be, just make sure that I'm here. You yes, know what sir. I'm saying? Believe yes, that. Sir. But welcome back, man. And, and it's been not a minute since we sat down because we talk. You know what I'm saying? We stay in contact with each other. You know um, what I mean? The last time I was here was right before I had went and did the, um, the prison, my uh, last prison stint. Really? Like you'd be like, he's so cold hearted. It's not that we cold hearted. But we know it's only a matter of time before we go back to jail. Mm -hmm. So I can't even love my children like I want to. I can't get close to my wife because when I go to jail, I don't want to be in there stressing about them. Mm -hmm. You the first person I'd have told this to. Yeah, that was like 2015 or 16. No, man. We haven't sat down since then. No, sir. Really? Six years ago. That's the last time we sat down. Oh, hey, man. You know I was was supposed to come back, but I had lost. Mm -hmm. I lost in court in Mm -hmm. Florida. So that was six months, and then Illinois had a warrant for me. Damn. So when I had to go, they, it was crazy. The day I was supposed to get out, they was like, you've been served. They oh, served yeah. me a warrant. And then when you were supposed to get out, didn't they, like, lay back over into another bid? Yeah, and so I went and served the 33 months in uh, Chicago. Oh, damn. Yes, Man, sir. so you ain't leaving nowhere from here, though, right? No, sir. Okay, there it is. Mm-hmm. But but you know it's a trip, man. Like I don't know, Kev, if, if it's your presence or your energy, but it felt like I've been, I've seen you always sat down before. Like no, it hasn't we, been that we long. We saw each other. Remember, oh, we, we saw see each, each other in the mall. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. time after that, we saw each other in the. Um, we saw. I saw you at Snoop's. Yeah, and yeah. It, but th- we saw each other at Snoop's, but then we bumped into each other again. And uh, the mall in Woodland Hills. Man, I'm just going to start carrying a little something to and record. The foot lock, and the Foot Locker. Man, you sure didn't buy me no shoes that day, remember? <laughs> and, you was like, uh, and you was like, man, Kevin, bro. I, no, I told you. I said, I'd like to see you by yourself. You was like, I'd like to see you by yourself. Hey, man. And that's, you know, and I walk, of course, you the same. I walk with God, bro. I'm good. I, I walk I walk solo, man. And yes, so. any man can try to put their hands on you. That I, I'm not. I'm not stupid. I know that things can happen. But I don't. I don't also put out that kind of energy. Yeah, it's the energy. The Believe ener- that our energy protects us. Yeah, and and anybody that feel like they have to walk with someone, more power to you. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> I like. I've been walking by myself my entire life. You know, and I got people. It's my, my you know brothers, sisters, things. But I've been walking by myself. If I if I had someone with me all the time, then when I'm by myself, I wouldn't feel comfortable. I don't. I I like. I'm I I'm more of a. A, a loner. Mm-hmm. It's not that I'm not friendly. I just I have more fun and enjoy myself. Yeah, when I'm by myself. Yeah, that's what I say. I like me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. What I, now, I, and I say I like me. You know what I'm saying? Do you love the Kevin Gates that sits in front of us now? And at one more point, than, more, more as opposed. Yep. Can I ask you a question? Yes, you can. Does it look like it? Yes, it does. But I want you. To tell me about what that is. Um, this is the first time I can say I've been proud of myself. A lot of my results came from uh, beating myself up, mm-hmm. being hard on myself. And I guess that was, you know, that was a way of, like, um, dealing and working through, like, a traumatic past. Mm-hmm. And I just got to the point where I'm able to laugh at myself. Like, I was trying to stand. Like, they got this little ab wheel that I be working on. <laughs> And like I, the one with the little handles on yeah, it, and yeah. I, so, um, I just I'm I'm back able to stand up and do it st- from a standing position, and stand up and then roll down, yeah, then come all the way, all the way back yes, up. Sir. Yeah, that's a whole different world. And, um, I I you know you do it on your knees, but I'm able to stand up. I was doing it at first, but I had kind of ripped one of my ab muscles. My body wasn't ready. I was doing it prematurely. Mm-hmm. So now I'm to the point where I could do it like standing up. And when I was doing it at the gym. I had kind of like slipped a little <laughs> bit and I laughed at myself. Yes, and it sir. felt good to be able to laugh at myself and not be embarrassed and not care about what other people think. So for the first time, I really been like happy. And I've been 
I've been cautious of what I speak to myself. Like the lady was like, you working out? I say, no, ma'am. I'm just in here celebrating what my body could do. I heard that. Because oh, it's been a journey. Hey, Amen. And when you say it's been a journey and you're happier now, yes, like we, we look at from the outside in, some people, but you've always been real about peeling off these layers. You know, you ain't never came in as a perfect person. You I'm know? the only rapper that ever, I went on Mike Tyson and talked about me and him shared a, a, a story about us both being molested. Like, I'm the only rapper that live in their truth. Right. Ain't nobody living in their truth. Why did you feel like you, you couldn't have so had that conversation men, five so years ago, right? so many men that needed to hear that. Right. Then they got these other interviews with these bitch-ass niggas talking about what the fuck I said. But you ain't going to see me and tell me none of that shit right. in public. You not. I'm just in a happy place. I'll still fuck yeah. you off. Yeah, don't feel like you can't yeah, get a so total like, recall. So, but it's so many men that have been through that kind of shit and they <laughs> all day, every day. And I made it, I made a, a space and a safe place for men to be able to start healing them. Yeah. Mas, ma, masculinity don't have to be toxic. It can be sacred. You know, you can love yourself so much that you can look at a woman and she don't deserve my dick. Right. You can you can love yourself that much, like you can. Hey, Kev, do you think you could have had that conversation with Mike Tyson five years ago? No, because right. I was operating out of fear. Yeah. See, I'm gonna tell you the truth. See, all that gangster shit I was doing was out of fear. I had that fear of being vulnerable. Like if a man looked me in my eyes, it's it's a challenge. Right. That me or you, that's fear. And now when I look at people in their eyes, I see myself or different versions of myself. And me being a nurturer, if I can aid in this issue along your journey, then cool. If I can't, then cool. Just sometimes me being able to just give you a look up, I understand what you're going through. Just speaking to somebody could change their day. And I know with Tyson, man, Tyson also always go on record saying, before I fought, before I got in the ring, I was scared. And you look at Tyson as the, man, that's the baddest man on the earth. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody getting in with him. I love but, that dude. Yeah, man. Same here. I, I love doing. that dude. And do you feel like it was a safe, not a safe space, but that was the person? No. That also it, I, had, I had already started my healing process from going backwards. I had to go back to my childhood. I had to go back because I don't want to project these things onto my children. And my children... It's about breaking generational curses for me right, right. now. I want to always create a space where my children feel comfortable communicating with me. So I went back to heal myself and my inner child for my children. I want my children to always, that's like toxic masculinity. If my daughter fall down, get up, you all right? No, that's when it's time for me to exhibit femininity, like my feminine side, and nurture her. Come on, baby, it's all right. That's when it's time for me to be a nurturer. Now, if you violate her, then now it's time for me to be a monster. It's, it takes balance. You know what I'm saying? That's why when I hear, like, people talk about this, like, the, the feminist movement and this alpha male bullshit, that's bullshit. It's like we're not supposed to be competing with each other. We're right. supposed to be. It's balanced. Like, my woman supposed to balance me out, and I'm supposed to balance her out. It's about balance. It's like, it's like, it's like Mother Earth, Father Sky. It's like... We create life, and we, we, you know, I bought the house. I worked hard for the house, right. and you put your love into the stitching and the fabric by the way you furnished it yes, and sir. did the interior decorating. So when I walk in the bathroom, I don't just feel the love. I can see that you put your love into this shit because mm -hmm. I don't want to target and just bought some time. Yeah. You know? <laughs> hey, man, you know what I tell people a lot too, Kevin, and, and you probably seen this, especially when you say, man, when I was out here and I was, you know, looking a certain way and doing certain things. I always say, man, that sometimes we send a certain representative. And do you feel like early on you were sending a representative to do the interviews, the lifestyle? It was you. Yes, sir, because yeah. I, I hate to say this. I was operating out of a a stance of, of a, the head executioner. Yeah. I was just, you know, I was fulfilling my title. Mm -hmm. I'm a general, so I'm on the front line with all of my soldados. I mean, my soldiers, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a general. So I'm always on the front line as a general, but as a chief, I got to be able to look at each one of my soldiers and see what they need, whether it be psychologically, mm -hmm. whether it be helping them with emotional intelligence to navigate their emotions, whether it be to show them how to nurture themselves, whether it be 
to show them how to exhibit that confidence and find that confidence in they self. I got to be able to look at whatever need that it is. And it's beautiful that God allowed me to go through all of these things yeah. because I'm a greater blessing. I embrace the things that happened to me in my past with a sense of positivity. I replace that negative emotion attached to it with a positive emotion. And I'm grateful for everything that happened because I'm a greater blessing to the world. Yeah. I mean so much more to the world now. Don't nobody walk up to no other, uh, with all due respect, like no disrespect to these other rappers. I swear to God, I'm not. Don't nobody walk up to them and tell them, you changed my life, right. and show them slices where they tried to kill themselves and commit suicide and say, you stopped me from committing suicide. I was vulnerable. I peeled all yeah. the layers back. I let you feel a bullet hole in my head and told you I put it there. I'm the one who said that I disconnected my Instagram in 2020 and tried to take my own life. I'm the one who said these things so other people understand it's okay to feel like this. But this is the way that I, I changed it around. I take all of that negative emotion and energy and I put it in, I turn my pain into passion. I put it into something that better serves me and humanity. With with people looking and thinking that they want it all. You know, when when you have accolades, when I you don't. have the album, you know, and I'm talking about from the outside, people thinking that they want it. Then you say, you know what, I put a, a bullet in my head. I'm the one that wanted to kill myself. I'm the one who, you know, got off of social media. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, you boxing with de- you were boxing with demons all the time. To this day, we probably it's still It's a are. difference if you've not, you've never been in the streets. Yeah. I've been in the streets my whole life. See, I don't have that story like, well, I was never not thugging. Mm-hmm. When was I ever not thugging from anybody that know me? When was I ever not thugging? You look at the Kevin Gates. Now, this is a blessing. This is beautiful to see me right here like this. Well, Did you know you were going to arrive here? I was afraid to. Right. I, I knew. Mm-hmm. Every every man knows. Did you know you were not satisfied? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. It, that's what give me my drive right now because when I look in the mirror and, and I think back in retrospect and I always wonder, I would hate to suffer with the regret of what if I only would have tried. Yeah. I never, it, it hurt me. When I remember being in prison, watching all them different artists on TV, winning Grammys and whatever it is they win, I was like, you knowing your soul that's supposed to be. That's why yeah. I love when Inka Johnson say that. We live by this, we die by this, we don't surrender, we don't retreat. Every man must search his own soul. I listen to that quote every morning. And you knew, not taking theirs, but you knew that I, you know, Yeah, I'm that. supposed to be there, but I am there. Right. Because... Everything I do is emulated. So I am new. I was chasing something that I already have. You know, and me standing on the side of certain people, if it's not authentic, you know, the authenticity always is going to rule. The law of lenity states that whenever two opposing forces cannot come to an agreement, the lesser always rules the greater. And, you know, I come as I am. Do you feel I like, am as I come. Less is always more. Hey Amen. Do you feel like in and not just in the genre, but also just in the, the men that we are that we now you hear people talking about mental health, vulnerability, peeling off the onion and, and, and the you, layers. You had those conversations first. Yes. Years ago. Yes, we did, bro. And And it's crazy, man, because I've always I never I never thought of you as like. Kevin Gates, the rapper. Like, yes, we've sir. had some real conversations, bro. And and when you embrace, you embrace different. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? You don't, it's not, and I take everything. Because I take the slap. I, the, I see you. Yeah. Because I see myself in the picture. See, most people don't know who they are, so they can't see themselves in other people. I, I see you. Every hey. time I look you in your eyes, I see you. Because I, I know who I am. I see myself. Hey, man, can you look and... And I know this may sound crazy and people are gonna have a field day I with can. this. But can you look at somebody and know when they're not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every time. Mm-hmm. Cause I used Does to that be make that too. Others I, in com- uncomfortable? I used to be that too. Right. Explain. I used to be running for myself. I used to be too hard for myself. I was caught up in ego. The 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 false ego, the competitive nature. Yeah, man. But I had to, I had to, I had to kill my ego. Is that hard to do, though? It's not hard. Is it scary it's to do? It's uncomfortable. It's very Boom. scary. Yes. It's very scary. And my ego is a beautiful thing because it got me to this point. Thank you for getting me to this yeah. point. But I don't need I don't you need anymore. You. But it's tricky because the ego really only that'll keep us safe. 
It's only that'll keep us safe. But it's tricky because it it creep back in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So quick. You know what I'm saying? And, and it and it's an instant recall too, bro. It it, it takes a lot to humble yourself. It takes a lot to be vulnerable. It takes a lot to know how to go through these emotions. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like the man that can talk crazy, like this. That's crazy with that you said that. Yeah. Uh, my sensei. I'm pretty sure it's easier to sock sen- somebody in the sen- face. My sensei said it's more, it takes more courage to exhibit vulnerability yes. than it does to be a tough guy. Hey, man, I would see people, bro, and I would see them talking up a game, and I'd be like, he's scared. You know, when I see somebody, motherfucker, what? I'm like, he's I'm scared, no bro. Talking. Yeah, he's scared. You hey, know what I'm hey, saying? Hey, it's about energy. Nah. Yeah, that's it's, why I don't play these internet games. Yeah, I don't get caught energy. up in none of this. It ain't like, about no, yeah. Yeah, man. So when you when you see yourself, do you see yourself, Kevin Gates, going through this transformation? Did I see myself? Yeah, then? like, like wh- while you're doing it. like I didn't see myself going through the transformation, but I, I, I used to get glimpses. Yeah. And whenever somebody would tell me, man, you're going to be such a great motivational speaker. No, I'm fucking not. Right. right. That's what I'm doing. Gonna say, bitch ass did shit. you fight it? Then I'd have had other people be subliminal, like one of my good friends. And he, I, I asked, I, I didn't ask him about it, but I kind of hinted around it jokingly because he was on that, yeah, old preaching ass nigga. Da, 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 da. And I was like, and I was just flat. I said, yeah, big brother, you know, you know, you be feeling like I be preaching, bro. So I just don't be, nah, I wasn't meaning that. But you was hit, so you hollered. And I, I you was hit, so you hollered. Boom. Cause you was hit. So you was hit. You knew I had, you knew I hit you when I said that. So you backed up out it. And I was just joking. I say, nah, big brother, you know, you be saying I be preaching and all that shit. He was like, man, I ain't me. Yeah. But you was hit. Cause hey, you bro. know, you know. You know that I know you know what's up with me. Yeah. And I love you, but you know what's up with me. Hey, Amen. And I would think that you would be one of the people that would be extremely proud of. Cause you know. Hey Amen. I tell people, bro, if there was a pack but of But it dogs, kinda hurt, it kinda hurt me. But then I was like, the heart gotta break so it could fill up with love. And then it was a beautiful thing that he exposed himself in that manner because yeah. it was like, you afraid of my growth. Yeah. My growth and my change is scary to you. Yeah. And and you know what they say? Whatever it is, misery, whatever that blank, 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 loves company. Whatever you put in there, it loves company. Happiness loves mm-hmm. company. Misery loves company. So if you're changing and your guy not changing with you, anyone wants you to be with them because they love that company, bro. You know? Man, come on, man. I wasn't tripping on my I wasn't tripping on my partner, man. You can't you, you can't even go nowhere by yourself. Stop playing. Right. You live in fear. You operate out of fear. Do you feel like it, you find people it's hard to have a conversation with you because how real it can be? A man or, is scary. Yeah. That's the scariest thing you could be as a man. And it's also when someone feels like you know them, you figured them out. It ain't that big brother. Just when you talk with people, you expose them by just you being yourself. It costs zero dollars to it costs zero to keep it real. How? I don't have no phantoms. I don't have no Bentleys. I don't have none of that shit. Did you have I, it? Yeah, I done had some. Yeah, but yeah. you had to have it though. Not had to, but you had it to realize I, my favorite that truck, it didn't fill you my, up. My either, favorite though. truck is my F two fifty. I got a super dude F two fifty. That's my tra- favorite truck. Me and my brother just went. Whoever watching this, don't kill me. Don't kill me. I'm not going against Ford. Uh oh. <laughs> but I did go get the uh, TRX. And what's the TRX? That's that Dodge. Uh, oh. Me and my brother went and got matched. We went and got the TRXs. Hey, man, but when you say you did have that, and and maybe there was times when you popped off with even more jewelry, or did you feel like. You know why I wear jewelry? You, but not this. When you met me, you never saw me wear jewelry. Talk to me. I only wear jewelry. That's because my brother was still alive. My brother died, and I only wear diamonds because Mazzy, he loved jewelry. I can't wear this shit when I go hunting. I'm a country boy. I like hunting and fishing. I will go in the woods right now. It's a different energy when you out there. The animals don't come in that bitch talking to you. They know what's up. (laughs) Either you this or you not. And either I could tell if you hunt, you're going to have a different type of patience because you stalk. Yeah. Like, like nature give you a different type of patience. Do you see other people, and not putting anybody out there, broad stroke, 
Do you see other people's mistakes on how they walk, how they talk, how they conduct, how they yeah, handle Yeah, but things? I don't judge because yeah. I don't judge nobody because I used to be all that lame ass shit. Mm -hmm. it ain't, I ain't going to call it lame. I just call it a, a period for growth. Right. I and mean, when you say you had certain things, man. I used to be with that shit that. Like, oh, I used to be. Were you trying to find things to <laughs> make you either up. happy or make you look a certain way? Yeah. Where you I, say, oh, I, I, I got to have this. I got to have that whip. I, I got to. No, it was, I needed pacifiers. And yeah. when you come from poverty, you come from the streets, it's competitive. Like, it's always about the nigga who having motion. Mm -hmm. And for those of y'all that don't know what motion means, that's like you mm -hmm. having your way, you having something going mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. you financially well off, so to say. So you have emotion, you got something going on. So I always wanted to look like I was having motion or have some motion. And there even was a point where it was like, you you know, you fake it till you make it. And then it was a point where it was like, you know what, man, let's just be clean. Yeah. Was it tiring? Exhausting? Yeah. The most exhausting part for me was um making comparisons. That's what caused my depression. Like To others or to no, other things? To others. Like yeah. I look at social media and see how everybody's life going great. Everybody's slapping them on their ass and high-fiving them. And they doing shit that ain't even raw for real. Yeah. But when I do it, nigga don't say nothing. Y'all just wait three months later and just do what I did. And everybody be like, oh, oh, man, that nigga so raw. That nigga a bitch. Right. But Dude. at the same time, you know, I had to get out of that mindset, you know, and say, man, Kevin, you tripping like. You tripping. Like, I got off Instagram mm -hmm. and then went back in the streets. Don't nobody get the kind of love I get in the streets. I go everywhere. People really love me. They had a lady, a 70-year-old. I think she was 60-something, a white lady. She was like, I know you. So I always make a joke. I was like, uh, Kevin Hart. She was like, no. <laughs> I said, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm a YouTuber. She was like, no, you're not. You're a TikToker. You're that. You're that dick all in your stomach, guy. Ah! I said, what the fuck? This is an old lady. Oh, man. Hey, <laughs> hey man. What, how, and for one, there's just some, some things too, Kev, that just go viral. You know what I'm saying? But for her to know that you that, that was you. Man, it was, that was the lady told me, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, man. What, but you, if I would have been with 50 people, I wouldn't have had that beautiful moment. <laughs> right. I was by myself just doing normal. You put some dick in her stomach for her? Who, the lady? Yeah. No. Uh -uh. Okay, just check. Yeah. No, I do, I've done charity work, but right. I've hey. done charity work. Hey, man. But we all have. Hey, come on. Hey, I wish y'all would yeah. sit in here. Hey, man, but like let me that. tell you. Because yeah, y'all in front, big boy. We all have done charity hey, work. Hey, man, I've done charity yes. work and I've been to charity too. Same yes, sir. You know yes, sir. Now, come on, give me some of that, please. Yes, sir. <laughs> What do your DMs look like, bro? Because you've been talking about I'm not, head, I'm not urine, on, I'm not, I'm not on. You don't uh, even look at it. But see, you know what was so crazy about that interview? That's the only part you put on there. Right. But it was so beautiful because, like, the internet made it like this derogative. Y'all gonna tap me down, man. Them people went on that interview and really seen what I was saying. Mm -hmm. It was so beautiful. You talking H about the clickbait stuff? Yeah, they do the clickbait mm -hmm. stuff for clout. But when you went and looked at the interview, it was so beautiful. It was spiritual. It was beautiful. HCG, with a lot of bodybuilders taking shooting their stomach, is pregnant women's urine. So, bitch, you take it too, bitch. Damn. Mm. Wow. So I don't care what nobody say. Like, let's like I had the conversation about the wet nurses. Mm. Melanated people who could be in the sun. They receive energy from the sun. The, the fastest recovery is breast milk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On a, on a, they got people that buy melanated women's breast milk. Mm -hmm. They buy it yeah, because man. it's just like they got athletes that sleep in the pure yeah. oxygen chambers yep. for pure oxygen. They got athletes that won't tell you this. They drink breast milk Amen. for recovery because human beings on, not supposed to drink cow's milk. I haven't been mm -hmm. on social media since uh, July of 2022, right? But I'm, a, but I'm weird. But let me tell you, I didn't see the interview. So, of course, you get bits and pieces of people saying certain things. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, dude, like, I do have to ask you about, you. did you drink urine? Am I missing something? No, you're not missing nothing. Whatever you saw on no, the internet. No, because you look good. No, whatever <laughs> you saw on the internet, that's what it was. I didn't. But because I don't even feel like getting off into the conversation because right. it was just like, like, when I say something, people like to take it all the way out of context, 
all the way around the corner. But everything I say, I beg it scientifically. And then now it's like, you know, they did it to tear me down in the in the uh in the clickbait, but then they went to the interview and like, yeah, dude, dude know his shit. Mm. Dude know his shit. Man, but well, I'm gonna have to watch the entire interview because Yeah, it might I not know I, my shit. I didn't know to like really this this morning. And anybody I, else, anybody else, like you know, you got puss ass niggas that you know do God knows what behind closed doors, and you won't judge me. Mm-hmm. Bitch, you won't speak on me. You ain't even gonna come out here. Right. But you won't speak on me. But I said, you know what, Kevin, fuck that shit. We're gonna have a beautiful day. As you should, bro. Yeah, man. We, I don't know if we're going out for a glass or something afterwards, but whatever it is you're doing, brother. Nah, invite I ain't. me. You nah, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. Yeah. It wasn't even nothing like that. Oh, this come from fasting. All of this come from fasting, what you see. The, really the cure. How often do you fast? Or do you fast cleanse? Do you fast? Like, what? what is that fasting? Because I, I just came off of a good. All raw food, all raw vegetable, all raw. You That's know. not fast. Yeah, but fast I'm talking about a cleanse. Nothing. Yeah, I'm talking about a cleanse. What did what did or what do you do? Fasting is when you don't put nothing, nothing. in your body. Fasting is nothing. Water. For how long? If you want to do that, that could be considered fasting. Yeah. But a dry fast is when you don't eat or drink. How long you dry fast? It depends. Can you do? You can't do a week of dry fast. You do a, what? Some days. I done did the longest I done ever did dry fasting was like close to a month, about three weeks. Kev, no food, no. no water. Come on, how do you? Okay, how do you? Okay, hey, Watch yeah, this. talk to me. When your cell breaks in half, it releases hydrogen. What do we breathe in? Oxygen. Hydrogen to oxygen is what? Water. We create our own water. Man, I'm going I'm going to take your word for it cuz Lord knows. Please don't. When our cells break in half, when the body don't have nothing to eat, it start eating up all your bad cells. When your cells break, it releases hydrogen. We breathe in oxygen. The chemical compound for water is hydrogen to oxygen. I'm really a genius, but I just don't be trying to just broadcast that to the world cuz everybody, <laughs> you know like like they be like, man, he just used a bunch of big words. Now nah, you just a stupid ass bitch ass nigga. Mm-hmm. Cuz a smart person could be dumb, but a dumb person can't be smart. Mm. So fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, if you don't like me, I don't care. I mean, because, you know, at the end of the day, I still got a big dick. Yeah. Fuck you. Damn. When you fast. Please, man, hold on. Oh, yeah, all right. No, nah, yeah, I'm just yeah. saying that because oh, no, me and him to... talk like this all the time. Yeah, I, love just, I love it. I love it. No, he I'm might curious. just be doing this because you hear something, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> when, when you fast, uh, like when you first started fasting, did you find that each time it like got easier? Like if someone like her sees this right now practice, and they want to hear it. Practice makes you better, not perfect. Mm-hmm. And were there any hard times where you just like, I, I wanted You're to give up? You always want to give up, mm-hmm. but that's where we pray. Mm-hmm. That's when you tap into something spiritual. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's when you ask the Creator to give you this strength to continue this fast. When everybody coming around, you talking about, man, you ain't told nobody you fasting, but everybody, yeah. man, you hungry, you want to eat something. That's when you understand this shit spiritual. It's not just physical. Yeah. So I like I, I mean, do you get the compliments too though? Before when you don't even say anything and say, man, something's changed. Yeah. Look at me. Mm-hmm. Look at me. I look like a different person. Ken, what was mm-hmm. your biggest as far as weight? 310. 310. But people say, I want to show you something. Give me your hand right quick. You'll just squeeze right here. That's my bone. You see, that's just my bone. My bone's big. They was like, he wasn't never no 310. Man, eat my dick, man. You don't know how much the fuck I weigh. Shut the fuck up. You always being opinionated, you hear me? When you were at 310, did you, how did you feel? Uncomfortable. Right. I had to make other people feel uncomfortable. With you. To, to, so, because misery loves company. Anybody I saw in shape, I had to make it not cool to be in shape. I had to make it not cool to look good. I was miserable. I was the most negative person to be around. I wouldn't have wanted to be around me. Mm. I was negative. Did you know it then? Everybody, have a no- everybody yeah, you know, know it. it. They just be in denial. Yeah. Niggas know they fucking miserable. Everybody know that shit. Where do you think that came from? Because you got to think. And man. I was a hater. I was a hater. That's hating if you see somebody fly and you m- just make it to where even if you, man, man, that nigga broke. Yeah. I ain't got time to be doing it. I'm getting money. No, that nigga fly. That nigga fuck your bitch, boy. Mm. That nigga fuck but your bitch, man. But you know what's man. crazy, man? Even at your biggest, you were still, like, admired. 
You know what I'm saying? Or I couldn't see it. Right. I couldn't see it because I was so fucked up. I was in my own way. I was a goofy. You know what a goofy is? Yeah. A good good <laughs> goofy. That's what I was. Did did you know was it a point of unhappiness? Yeah, I was miserable. Yeah. I was a goofy. Yeah. Goofy's not happy. I was miserable. How do you re- go back and look at them old videos? I'm on the man, boy, you know. Man, Kevin, shut the fuck up. I'll be cringing when I look at my old videos of my old self. That's what I was going to ask. I'll be like, what the fuck? But, I never want to be that person again. But it's also growth, too, though. Big brother, you remember the, 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 um, you probably don't remember. They had, I was out with my children. Uh, I seen Nipsey that day. The picture of me and him hugging at Disneyland. He had his children at Disneyland. I had my family at Disneyland. We bumped heads over there. But I had been kind of knew him through my cousin, through, through, through my cousin. But anyway, long story short, um, I'm at Disneyland. I'm on the ride. The picture went viral because everybody's smiling on the roller coaster. I'm on that bitch looking stupid. I think I remember that picture. They like, he always got a straight face. No, I was a goofy. Now I know I could have been on that bitch <laughs> yeah. smiling and having fun. But I'm I'm the miserable one in the bunch. Did you feel like you, and, and I always say it again, and I'll say it, did you feel like you had to send that representative? Did you feel like if if you smiled at a certain man, point? Man, I was fat. You can't be fat and cheesy and friendly, man. You can't be fat and friendly, man. Hey, man, you know my biggest was 500 pounds. Mm. And I just did some work too, man. Nah, if and, I was a nigga like E40, yeah, see, that nigga make looking up like that nigga make being a big nigga so fly, bro. And he happy in it. You weren't happy. In Fuck it. no. Yeah, I couldn't even wash my back. Right. See, he just he just looked like a just a big player type nigga that got people that's gonna cater and all that. You know, it's it's different when you just you know what I'm saying. And when, and especially if you know. Mm-hmm. You're unhappy with it like and a Biggie, lot of other things. Like Biggie made it look fly. Yeah. But you, for you. Oh, no. Yeah. Because <sighs> you got to think. When do you like make this. it about your health, though? You know what I'm saying? Because you can make it about getting in the booth, getting the car, taking care of the family. You know, there's so many things that we take care of. My body, my temple. Yeah. Like, I love God. At the end of the day. Did you feel like you were abusing the temple? Yes, I was. I love God. So if I love God, my body, my temple, I can't hear God talking to my temple clogged up. I only eat one meal a day. That's it. Mm-hmm. I eat one meal a day because I, I govern my temple. I govern it. On Mondays and Thursdays, I drive fast. I only eat one meal a day. And I everybody that see me, they got I got partners my age and I started, my house was thinning and everything. I was losing hair and everything due to being unhealthy. And and I still eat whatever I want. I just do it in moderation. All things I do, I just do it in moderation. It's yeah. about balance because I went. I was vegan for a super moderation, long time. Moderation, not deprivation. Yeah, I was. I was. I was vegan for a super long time, but I realized it's about balance. Mm-hmm. Were you a green vegan or were you a Impossible Burger? Man, vegan I was fries? vegan, vegan. I done been every vegan you could think <laughs> right? of. I done been raw <laughs> vegan. I done been everything, but I just learned that it just take balance. I learned about the body, like the in, your body go through ingestion, then your body go through digestion, then your body go through the cleansing cycle. Even with your eyebrows, I mean, your your eyelashes, they go through cycles. I learned all this, you know, but I don't be speaking on all that because all my partners, well, they starting to get with the program a little bit, but if I get to talking to them, they, man, that nigga go with that old health ass shit. Yeah. You know, cool, fuck you. Hey, man, <laughs> right now where you are, and when you say you look into the past, you, man, I couldn't even look at some of them pictures. You knew exactly what you were feeling. That's the rear view mirror. What's in the windshield now? What do you see through that windshield that's that not that's coming up like, oh, in five All I'm going to say, people going to, I don't know. The people that's, that's on my level, they going to get this. You going to understand this. This wise woman, this very sexual creature, this goddess, she told me, she say, she say, the flowers don't chase the bees. And she was like, the flowers just are, and the bees come. Mm-hmm. And I noticed since I just really had got in tune all the way, well, starting to get more and more, because it's a journey. It ain't never no ending process. Starting to get more and more in tune with myself. I ain't gonna lie. 
the bees been coming. Yeah. And when I say the bees, that's like the things I attract now. Like, I was on wrestling, like AEW. I ain't going to chase that. It just happened. Right. Like, it just, it, it was in alignment. Like, it's some other things I will be on, you know, that's just in alignment right now. And it's a lot of things that I turned down that just, it just, my energy just wasn't in alignment with it. It could have been lucrative in nature, financially lucrative, but it just was like my energy. It wasn't worth my energy because my energy more important to me. And I noticed when I protect my energy mm -hmm. and put it where it's aligned, better things come. So a lot of things just be tests. Like the universe tests you with things. Like, like what did nigga say? I lost a bag and got a bigger bag. I lost a friend and got a real friend. Thought I lost a plug. He was really just a middleman. <laughs> Some be said on there. Hey Amen. And I want to share this with you as well, bro. Somebody like, sent that to me on my text. Like, <laughs> hey man, like I've been, I've been in radio for years, right? And yeah. you know, there's certain things that you love. You do this, but I went to this spot in last July, right? Yeah. And sir. I had a chance to peel off so many layers too, Kev. Like I mean. Even when I thought I didn't have daddy issues, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, fuck my dad, this, that, and the other. He wasn't there, but and I wasn't angry. But I just thought that it. it didn't. I thought it didn't affect me. You know what I'm saying? Until I started to do this other work and really peeling off layers. And I always had a conversation. I could talk That's to people, crazy. but peeling off layers, bro, and realizing like, yeah, you did have daddy issues. You did yes, have, and there was a lot of things that I learned. And I'm, I'm always gonna be. Under construction. I'm yes, sir. always going to be under construction, That's what bro. keep us young. Yeah. We only age due to stress. We stress ourselves out with bullshit. We stress ourselves out with bullshit. You get a cut on your hand and heal. Yeah. yeah. We only, like, that's And when I, you don't pay attention to it, it's healing anyway. That's, the stuff that's what I learned. Like, to. when I stopped eating and putting all that, my body ain't had to attack all that food. It could heal me emotionally. It's emotions attached to just the food in us. It's emotions, they harbor themselves in our stomach and in our hips. I never knew about emotional detoxing. When I started doing yoga, I had got in a pose called a pigeon pose, and I just started crying uncontrollably. My yoga instructor was, she put her hands on my back. She was like, the, the emotions that you're feeling right now are not your own. That's psychic debris. You have an emotional psychic detox. Psychic debris. She said, you're a natural empath. So I was like, just crying. And then when I got up, she like, how do you feel? I said, I feel pure. She was like, yeah, you you emotionally detoxing. You just had a big release. We weren't never taught how to emotionally detox. Right, mm -hmm. and it, and we weren't supposed to. We were never taught that shit. That's like if I see somebody playing basketball with their daddy, man, fuck that bitch ass nigga. Yeah, but I wanted that. I want to throw the football with my daddy, man. What mm -hmm. the fuck? Ain't nothing wrong with feeling like. Do this. you parent different because you didn't have certain things? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like yep. with me, Kev, when they were talking about anybody that know me, my homeboy Jose, we've been partners for decades. I, I I thought I wasn't tripping. Man, I ain't tripping off of that. And I wasn't. I wasn't, Kev. I was like, my mom was amazing. I wasn't tripping. But then when I started doing this work, I was like, I get it now. Like my father wasn't there, so I fathered different. No, I had to teach my son how to piss. Our mother's, I had to. Our mother's not wrong. Right. And the way that they raise us. But we end up having a lot of resentment. Like me and my mother, we just, we just like started back talking like maybe not too long ago. And I end my concerts like that. I tell people, if you don't have a good relationship with your mother, you should try to fix it. Because at the end of the day, she gave us life. All great men came through the womb of a woman. I told my mom, I said, I'm grateful for you. And I noticed when I went back and, and started my healing journey and I forgave my mama for a lot of the stuff because you got to realize she didn't know. She just was doing the best she could do. She was a kid and she loved me and she was trying to protect us. But once we get in the world and see, man, this shit ain't nothing like how this bitch <laughs> tried to tell me this shit was. <laughs> bitch, you tripping. You know, you had this resentment towards your mama. Like Tupac say, uh, the same drama when things were wrong, we blame mama. mama. And your mama do the best they can to protect you. You know what I'm saying? And see, on my end, my mom was everything. And most and most of the time, it could kind of be a false sense of self because they love us so much. 
and they practical in nature, which a man going to tell you, hey, 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 shit, it's time to take the training wheels off, dick, get out there. Yeah. Let's get it. Like, I had a grandfather, so I had, mm. I still had a strong man in my yeah. life that, come on, let's get it. Yeah, let's get back around there. You know, let's get it. When I say to you parent different, explain that to me. Um, I noticed that it's not about the material thing because I buy my children every toy they want, but they still play with cardboard boxes and make forts. Mm -hmm. They make forts. <laughs> they say make forts out of the cardboard boxes. <laughs> then I noticed um, my son had a problem one time. I ain't going to say where we was at, but he had a problem. And he had a little problem, a little situation with another kid. I say, look, man, tomorrow I'm coming in there. We, we, we coming in that bitch with you. I say, don't do him nothing. But if he do that again, punch him dead in his nose. And if his parents get involved, we going to file up. So just him knowing me showing up for him, his dad is showing up for him. Man, he had a beautiful day that day. <laughs> but it was beautiful for him to know he got somebody that's going to show up for him. Like I taught him at school, man, if, some, hey, if somebody say something to you, don't worry about that. If somebody put their hands on you, man, make sure you fuck them all the way yep. off. Hey, man. Hey, I'm going to come to school, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fuss at you in front of all the teachers. Then I'm going to take you and buy you every toy you want. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. You know you. <laughs> we don't, hey, we don't hey, bring, man. hey. We hard, but no cow was in this household. Hey, man, my mom used to tell us, it was seven of us kids, right? She said, if anybody touch y'all, they got to die seven times. Let's my go. Mom, my mom was the most <laughs> loving lady. Let's go. But you don't fuck with family. Ain't no, you know what I'm saying? No cow. Yeah. We hard, but no cow. Yeah, man. <laughs> how, how, how that coach in uh, Texas say? You tell me, bro. That what that coach say? Yeah, we. I, I don't. I don't raise no pussies. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't raise yeah. no yeah, pussies. Man. I yeah. love what he said. <laughs> hey, man, with, dude, you... With, with the parent that you are also, man, I always tell people, whatever you're doing, if it's, if it's radio, if it's this, whatever, man, being a parent, Louis about to have his first. Yeah, man. That's the hardest oh, so-called job you ever had. There's no clocking out. Nathalia, your I son love is it. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want more children. Yeah. I love it. I, this time, this time, it's going to be a lot different. Mm -hmm. It's going to be way different. I'm so you be, know, do you know you're going to have more? Yes. I heard that. Maybe like four or five. Damn. I'm going to have more children. I'm only getting younger. I'm going to have more children. Explain. I'm only getting younger. What that feels like. Why Why do you say that? Because I am. You know it. I'm aging backwards. You feel it. Everybody can see it. I yeah. ain't the one seeing yeah. it. Yeah. I'm aging backwards. When we're in the hallway, you was like, look at me. <laughs> you know That's crazy. Five years ago, you probably wouldn't have said, look at me. It's God. Yeah. It's not nothing else. It's God. But I'm gonna have more children. But this time, I'm gonna be in the water when they, uh when we had a, the natural birth. I'm gonna be in the water when the baby come out. None of my children opened their eyes till they heard my voice, cause I was present with the mama the whole time they was pregnant. So they knew the voice of their father anyway. Babies know they they learn so much in the womb also. Mm -hmm. So that then um. It's just going to be different. Like, I provided a space for my children to grow and be themselves. It's just going to be different. I'm going to have about four or five more, Damn, maybe bro. six. Well, I don't got to be uncle because I know I'm not having any. That's a, that's, <laughs> a, that's a blessing to yeah. have children. Like, I loved it. Hey, man, now when you, when you see Kevin Gates, man, and there's so many, and you don't, I know you don't mess with social media, but there's so many outside entities. And I do ask quite a few times, man, how do you keep that chatter, all that clutter that goes on with this so-called business? How do you keep that away from you? Um, my manager right here, present with us, and he'll tell you, like most people say, I'm the hardest person to work with, but I'm really not. I'm a simpleton. I'm simple. My phone's going airplane mode at like 8 p.m. because the people think I'm weird, but the transmission is still transmitting radiation. This disrupts your melatonin cycles. It, it, it disrupts that you're not getting a good night's sleep with Same. the phone in the room. I understand. People talking about binary beats and all that shit. That's just hypnosis. The be most beautiful thing you can listen to is your own breath. Put you some earplugs in. Your breath. Your breath is the most beautiful thing you can listen to in your own heartbeat. Mm -hmm. That's the most beautiful thing you can listen to. Now, you might be having thoughts and be detoxing. Because, you know, we psychologically detox at night. We decompress. Yeah, bro. You know, you jump and twitch and your body move. That's just, you just releasing energy. Mm -hmm. It's just boggled up energy. 
See, I do a lot of yoga, so I move that energy around. That energy got to be moved around in the body. So once you know what's going on, you don't need nothing to suppress it like a drug or this or that. Man, everything we need is already in us. Mm -hmm. Then I go to the gym like, I get up like three or four. I take me a cold shower because I, I I like the way it charged me. That's like my coffee. Mom, I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. I'm in the gym when the, I'm in the gym before the doors open. Like when a, I say before the doors open, but if it's five, like if it's four, like forty, they're usually kind of open and let me in. What time did you put your body down? Uh, probably about eight. It just seemed like I got to take a warm bath. <laughs> or a warm shower, then I can go straight to sleep. Is it crazy how much attention you pay to yourself now? I did a lot of time. Right. So that's the advantage oh, so. I, I got. I did a lot of time. I've been doing time since I was 13. So that's the advantage I got. I always been in tune with myself. So I know I know if I drink cow's milk, which I grew up drinking cow's milk, I loved it, but it always it make me real yeah. mucusy. Yep. have phlegm in my throat. And then... It's so crazy. It's like since I've been back on the farm, I noticed that when you go to like tractor supply, none of your animals can drink cow's milk. They drink goat's milk. No animal could drink cow's milk or they'll kill them. Mm. They'll die. Now, if you go like to Mexico or Puerto Rico or like uh I've been a, I've been I've been all through South America. I say if you go to them places, they don't have the hormones. That we have. That we have in our cows. So that milk don't make me sick. You know what I'm saying? That milk don't do nothing to me. But it's over here, when I get it out of the grocery store, it just it make me real mucusy. There it is, man. We got more with Kevin Gates in the neighborhood, man. We'll call it a uh, part two. Part two with our, <laughs> our good friend, big interview, Kevin Gates in the neighborhood, big boy's neighborhood. <laughs>